now, children. Tonight, old Uncle Tom going to tell you the real, true story. So, but yo, what's up with your brother, my man? Oh, my man, middle man, Ace Cool. Cause right now you're just a liar, a straight mentirosa. Oh, me? Today you tell me something, y mañana otra cosa. I'm right here with Mellow Man Ace, legendary hip hop artist. What's up, man? Chillin', chillin', man. Out here on the Ave on a nice, beautiful Saturday. Yes, you know, sir. Cypress Hill, Cypress Ave. This is it, man. This is where it all started. This is where it all started at. So right I kind of, I kind of want to go way, way, way back before we, we even jump into the hip hop shit. Um, I know you left at an early age, but what, uh, what did your parents or your your relatives tell you about what it was like growing up in Cuba? Así entiende nuestro pueblo sus deberes. Porque entiende que el enemigo es uno. El mismo que nos ataca a nosotros. Oh man, yeah, we left in 1971. And you know, the stories we heard here were, you know, food rationing lines. The law establishing the ration, known as the Libreta, was passed in 1962, with hundreds of ration stores finally opening on July 12, 1963. You had you you got like 20 pounds of rice for the month for your whole family, but you had to go stand in a long line. You know what I mean to get that. You had 20 pounds of rice, 20 pounds of coffee, 20 pounds of uh, I think beans and sugar, um, and that was kind of all it was. And then if your uncles or your pops found, you know, they got a pig somewhere. Then that day you you had some meat, you know, they put the, the whole pig up, slowly cook it, you know, it take a long time to cook a pig. Shit was crazy, man. Yeah. Um, very humble, very humble be beginnings, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, living under communism and shit like that, it's never easy. You know, I remember seeing Soviet tanks on my block as a young man. Um, it's, 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 it's sad at that time it was really sad you didn't really know what it was when you four or five years old but you know you come to the United States and the worst you see is, is like a police car on your street in less than 90 days between April and June of 1980 more than 110,000 Cubans flee Cuba what was it like uh, growing up in LA being Cuban did you get a lot of shit from you know the Mexicans El Salvadorians I'm gonna take your little Mexican friend with me. And I'm gonna kill him. I'm Cuban B. Yes, Cuban B. At that time, um, it was a, a big Cuban um, community, Southgate, Bell, mm -hmm. even in the Huntington Park. Okay. And um, and even up in parts of Cudahy, you know, it was a big Cuban community. And so we, we had our pocket of, of Cuban things to do. However, you know, we did get um static you know we we had to box a lot you know predominantly with the mexican cats and, and some of the brothers too because the mexicans didn't understand how we could be black and, and speak perfect spanish and the brothers hated the fact we spoke spanish but was black so <laughs> we didn't know english at that time you know i was just a young cat trying to figure it out talking like a very broken Sammy Sosa type of English, you know, like baseball's been very, very good to me type shit, you know, uh, shit like that, man. Uh, it was, it was arguments over dumb shit, you know what I mean? Like cultural differences and things like that. That nowadays we look at in our older age, and, and we're looking back and we go like, wow, how ignorant was society back then? Did you uh, fall in love with hip hop, and who were some of the influences that got you into this art? I gotta say, well, you know, I heard, I heard Rapper's Delight come out in real time in 1979. That record was all over the radio. I said a hip hop 
the hip, it, the hip, it, do the hip, hip, hopper. You don't stop the rock and do the bang, bang, boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. But I wasn't really effective with the virus of it yet, you know. Um, I would have to say it was like um, 1982 in there when I heard. And, and, and listen, we, we were playing. We knew a guy who was a DJ. He had a he had turntables in the back of his like um, hairdresser place. He had a, his parents owned like a hairdresser, and he had turntables in the back of the, of the thing down on Tweedy Boulevard. And he showed us all these records from Sugar Hill Records at that time, like the sequence and shit like that, um, Funk You Right On Up, records like that. Um, and then also, um, I heard a, a group at that time, this was like 81 in there, I heard a group by the name of the Mean Machine, they was also on on Sugar Hill. Um, he had all the Sugar Hill records, so he played this one record called The Mean Machine, and the song was called The Disco Dream. So We got something new, we want y'all to hear, so come a little closer and lend us your ears to Mr. Shit. Get my side. You know you're cool, show the party people you can rap like too. When so I, that song really stuck with me, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so like 1982, 83, we saw a movie called Wild Style. Um, that's when I started to start writing rhymes in high school. 11th grade in there, 10th grade, 11th grade, and you know, ever since I had heard that uh, that Mean Machine record, I, because the, there was an MC who broke off into a small Spanish rap in there, mm. and I said to myself, I want to be like that dude. Were there a lot of Latino rappers? Do you remember, you know, some of the ones coming up back then? There, nah. there were no Latino rappers except for the part that, like I said, I heard mm -hmm. this one cat, Mr. Schick, of the Mean Machine, and I would have to go and, and research that and find that, find his name out, who he was, in order to, you know, really get him fully engulfed in, 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 into the, like, the whole Latino aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then I came to find out that there was Puerto Rican cats, you know, that they weren't necessarily yelling that they were Puerto Rican on the records, but they were there at Hip Hop's inception. You know, people like Prince Whipple Whip. My man, DJ Disco Wiz. Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase, get loose one time for the people. People like that, you know, um, that influence early hip hop culture, you know. Um, so, but again, there was nobody really rhyming that I heard on Wax except Mr. Schick. And, and that's what really guided me to want to be rhyming in all Spanish. And then later on, I would, I would add on to that by creating the bilingual rhyme style that I created. 